And welcome to our booth. Everybody standing outside, why don't you come in? We have so many seats here free, available. Make yourselves comfortable. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our booth and to our presentation about uh, digitalization and the digital enterprise for manufacturing, for the manufacturing industry. And by the look on your faces, I can see your, what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, digitalization again, how predictable, Dave. right? <laughs> Chris, 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 don't talk negatively about digitalization because after all, we are living in some really exciting times and you don't look like a guy who wants to live in the past, right? Well, not everything was bad uh, about the Can past. Can we get the speaker That's notes? Not really uh, how I meant it. Um, I mean, just think about the, the, the vinyl age back then. Remember yeah. that Remember that feel, the, the look, the smell, I do, the sound? I do, I do the sound. But, and I mean, uh, the vinyl album is going through a revival for good reasons. But um, don't forget all the time you sat there in front of your record player copying those vinyl albums onto your mixtape that you want to have on your Walkman going for that morning run. Because for obvious reasons, taking one of those babies on your back wouldn't have made a lot of sense, right? Well, I guess that was the time when music was digitized. Um, everything became way more comfortable when CDs came out, right? Sure, sure. And you said digitized, and this is actually a very good example. Taking something analog and turning it into digital, digitization. But remember, we are talking about digitalization today. And um, think about the way we all consume music nowadays, mm -hmm. streaming services of our various kinds. And um, you can put together a playlist without the hassle of actually copying any data. And that's really nice. Something I wouldn't want to be without uh, nowadays. So cool to have. Yeah, and it's a bit nerdy, though, if you think about those adaptive algorithms that are looking at your morning run, the pace, and it actually uh, gives you a suggestion on what music you could actually listen to to get that extra second out of that last kilometer of your morning run. You know, it would be cool if my shoes could actually do that. What do you mean? Well, it would run for me. You know? Your shoes would run for you. Yeah. I could look into that. Could be a bit proved to, uh, difficult to, to actually get out, worked out. But um, what you can do, though, today is that you can order your customized running shoes based on your stature, your weight, your running pattern. Obviously, in the color of your choice, delivered in the same time as you would have for a customized or mass customized mass production part, right? Now, I'm aware, of course, uh, that digitalization has changed the way we buy things, the way we use things. But what exactly does that have to do with uh, manufacturing? I mean, uh, it's kind of hard to imagine uh, how they can produce things <coughs> for let's say, such individual things for sure. such a mass, yes. ma uh, mass production. You're absolutely right. This is a huge challenge for the industry today. Talking about that time to market, it's been there for all the all time, basically. But now we also have the flexibility, the individualization, and at the same time being able to produce products with that particular quality you want, get efficient, and of course also protect your intellectual property against cyber attacks and things like that, right? You're getting very theoretical here. Uh, um, anything more tangible? Sure. So. My suggestion is you take a seat and you give the stage to me for the next few minutes and I take you through the offering and what's possible already today. That's my kickoff, right? That's okay. your kickoff. All right. right. Have Bye. fun, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris. So the reason why many of you are here are actually to look at the new technologies that are coming onto the market as of today. And uh, there's been huge changes in the way products are being innovated and developed over the last few years. If you take generative design or topology optimization, if you like, that is kind of applying nature's way of constructing trees and plants, making the most amazing uh, designs possible. And when you have those amazing designs, you also need manufacturing methodologies to actually build them together. And for that, technologies such as additive manufacturing comes to play. It's kind of 3D printing, and you have a cubicle just behind you where you can look at this uh, information in detail. And the evolution of products, how they evolve over time. Most of you are aware of cloud technology. A cloud technology is about storing data, many think, but it's much more than just storing data. It's about analyzing data and feed the insight back into the rest of the development of the products. So if you want to incorporate all those new technologies, you need to transform your company into a digital enterprise and look in particular at the ideation, the realization, and the utilization phase of your environment. 
And to get the most out of this transformation, you need to look at the entire value chain, all the way from product design and through to services. And you want to be able to weave a digital thread throughout the value chain, um, making able to uh, having information going back and forth. So you may wonder, wh why is this transformation actually necessary? Well, it's more or less the only way to react on those uh, more complex products that are coming your way, more complex products that you need to produce. And this actually gives you the opportunity to reduce cycle times, get more efficient, increase innovation at less risk. We at Siemens call this the holistic approach. And it's enabled by Team Center, which sits as a fundament under the five steps. And it offers connecti connectivity to the Internet of Things with MindSphere, our cloud-based open IoT operating systems. And it allows you to analyze both the production and the product and feed that information back into the development chain. And at this point in time, when everything is working smoothly, data is flowing back and forth, then the digital twin comes into play. And the digital twin is kind of the copy of the value chain in a digital environment. And you can use this digital twin to design, test, simulate your products in a virtual environment without the need of building physical mock-ups or prototypes or consuming any real resources. And I'm going to show you this on one of our own products. It's a thematic field PG. PG is Programmiergerät. It's German for laptop. It's not. It's a device you're using in uh, the development of SPS code in the factories. Uh, it's a very tough laptop. You could literally drop it, and it would work as fine as a, anyway. It's really good. Um, and if, you, if we say that you would like to construct this, you could use our NX solution suite to all the way from the first idea, the innovation, the industrial design phase, change the colors and just optimizing it, and do the construction work in one environment. And simulation is playing a key role here. So take a look at the simulation now. A computer like this has got a processor. A processor develops heat. Heat needs to be transported away. And this you simulate. You simulate all the physical behavior on the components in a virtual environment. And um, if there would be too much heat being generated, you would have an obvious problem. You don't want that. So what do you do? Since you're working in an associative environment, you let the construction and the engineer know about this issue, and he or she can easily go in and change the size of the cooling bracket, add an additional ventilation hole, uh, and the third solution, which is not that appealing, would be to take a smaller processor. This is construction, and some of you may be aware of our latest family member, Mentor Graphics, are offering solutions for electronical design and simulation. So that's also now a part of our offering. And with that, I come to the end of the first part of my presentation, where we have developed a digital twin of the product. And this information now is something we want to use in the next step, the production planning. Since we are in Team Center, we will also carry out the process planning inside of this environment, creating a bill or process, uh, the steps for the production. And for that, we have uh, the ability to check for ergonomic uh, assessments, care, um, making sure that the working environment is good for our colleagues on the shop floor. You don't want to have them running the risk of getting work-related injuries, injuries or similar. Or you're working with a robot. In this case, you have a dual arm robot working in the same environment, using the same uh, data from the factory. And it's an automated process, if you like. Simulation also on a bigger scope. If you take the entire factory, the throughput of material, discovering bottlenecks, scaling the buffers, and even simulating the consumption of energy, is also something you can simulate. And at this point in time, you also see a lot of machines. Those machines need PLC code to run. And now we have the ability to use our digital twin from the machine and basically extract the PLC code from the virtual world and push that into TIA portal, which is our engineering framework for um, laying out everything that has to do with automation. <clears throat> and the overall result is uh, validated holistically with a virtual commissioning. There you see our Simatic S7-1500 controller, or the, the digital twin of the same, PLC SIM Advanced. 
And the real PLC code is working against our digital twin of the production cell. And once this is validated virtually, we send this information up to the real machine. And we're cutting the uh, commissioning time with a huge amount of percentage. And the engineering of all the automation components is carried out in just one tool, the TIA portal. And thanks to our world-leading automation components and our concept of TIA, we enable smooth and efficient production. And with that, now we have the digital twin also of the production planning. So now we come to the point where the production is starting. And also here, we can optimize the order, how they're being produced. So if you wanted to reach the highest level of efficiency, you can optimize the right sequence of operations using Semantic IT Preactor, basically to look what resources are available to carry out the certain operations. And to carry out operations the best way, you also sometimes need work instructions. Using Semantic IT, MES, you use the data generated in the planning steps, simulations, artwork, etc., and you send it down to the various work cells so that people working there knows what steps they have to do in order to assemble the product right. Quality, extremely important. You want to monitor quality. This is also Semantic IT, and you see the bars down here. The bullets are showing where we are quality-wise. The very minute you see that the quality might go down, out of bounds, you have the ability to be proactive instead of reacting on quality changes. OK, so now we're producing our laptop. And with that, also huge amounts of data. Data that is very important and very valuable for us, and data that we want to use. And with MindSphere, a cloud-based open IoT operating system, we collect and analyze the data and feed it back into, or turn it into knowledge, more or less. So now we have the three phases, the product, the production, and also the analysis, product and production intelligence. And the cool thing is we have it all on one platform, on one integrated data model. So what does that mean? Well, basically, that all stakeholders involved in this process get access to the data at that very moment in time when they need it, no matter where they are on the planet, what in what time zone. They always have access to the correct data. So what do you need in order to enable all this? <clears throat> well, it's the DES, the Digital Enterprise Suite. Uh, and it's a portfolio that helps you to realize your digital transformation. It's comprised of Team Center as a collaborative platform. You got the PLM, MOM, and the TIA, and behind it all, MindSphere. Um, and it all connected to MindSphere. So with that, you can reach that speed you want to be fast to market. You are able to provide the flexibility to offer customized products to all your customers, being able to produce quality, increase efficiency, and at the same time, be sure that no one is kind of taking advantage of your intellectual property. And uh, this is what you need to become the game changer you need to be, uh, to realize your digital transformation, and more or less make the future yours. Chris. Finished. I am. All right. Let's give a big round of applause, Magnus, at home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank, thank you. you very much. I'll you take that. It? 10 seconds to go. I know. You were fast. I know. I New record for Magnus, ladies and gentlemen. If you were here last year, he was never, he was never done. Uh, you, you, what, how long do you need? 25, 27 20, minutes? 27. Yeah. All right. High score. Always messing up our schedule last year. OK. Let's stick to the schedule this year. And um, once again, also a big hello to everybody watching uh, our live stream. Um, we uh, would like to introduce to you the next topic, and next presentation. I see all these people standing over here. If you want, just come inside. We have some seats over here, OK? Just feel free to walk around or walk right through the middle and take a seat here on our bleachers. There we go. So once again, welcome to the Siemens booth and welcome to the Thought Leaders Forum. What we'll be talking about now, now we're going to be talking about MindSphere. And uh, this is the cloud-based open IoT. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that abbreviation, the Internet of Things operating system from Siemens. Now, we all have smartphones. We all use apps. We all use uh, other mobile devices. And they're all connected. They're all synchronized. 
um, and we don't even really think about how it works. But these are just small things. Um, how about the big things? How do hospitals, airplanes, and so forth uh, connect um, with the digital world? This is where MindSphere comes into play. And we now have two experts in the field uh, that I'd like to bring to the stage with a big round of applause. So please welcome Sebastian Wolf and Matthias Lutz. Uh, 